welcome back everyone, Toy Shiz here, and that is a wrap on New York Comic Con 2024. It was today, Sunday, the very last day, but a very enjoyable day, as I just got to hobnob around, take a walk, meet up with some awesome people, and largely just take lots of photos and videos to share throughout this upcoming week. So we do have a lot more to talk about, but in the meantime, today we're going to be discussing Jada Toys, which I am so stoked for. From going from the die-cast car company to now doing things like Hollywood Rides and RC Remote Control Wednesday Thing Hands, of which... If you're wondering, yeah, this is what it looks like. I may or may not have been sent one of these to check out, and check out we will later this week. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite cool. If you're interested, they are hitting store shelves now. And then they also do big-time sort of RC cars, if you're interested, like the Back to the Future DeLorean, which is pretty darn cool. I like that the antenna is the rod that has to catch the power line. That's that's pretty cool. The people that work at Jada Toys, when you talk to them at conventions like this, they're always so joyful, and they're just having a blast telling you about the products. For lack of a better term, I could just call this the Fast and the Furious Godzilla Mobile, but it's a really a 2009 Nissan QTR. And I totally did not know the name. I had to look at the placard and write it down, but yes... Jaded is more than just die-cast cars, because they also do things like these nano scenes, which, in this case, the weekend was definitely devoted to the Ghostbusters. Hasbro did their HasLab, and then Jada had their Ghostbusters Con exclusive. I'm pretty sure this is not going to be available in the sense of being online to grab. This is a convention exclusive, and so... I would say that going forward for the immediate future, any convention coming up that Jada will be attending, you could probably look for this. So that's pretty cool. It comes with a lightly toasted Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. He is roughly around the six, six and a half inch mark, which evens out for a very, very teeny tiny die cast Ghostbusters Ecto-1. You have the street, of course. You have the firehouse. You even have a church if he wants to step on it. So you kind of have all these cardboard backdrops. It makes up the city, makes up the nano scene. You get it? And it's pretty darn cool. Is it for me? No, it's not for me, but it's definitely for some of you Ghostbuster fans out there. So from the Jada Next Level, which is kind of like their upgraded sort of model on different various items that they produce. Very cool artwork, too, by the way. That box really does stand out. It's more of like a slipcase cover but like i said if this is something for you if you didn't grab it at new york comic con coming up for any convention that you can find jada at they should have more of these available and for that <laughs> we are going to be getting into scooby-doo of which we have seen these revealed at san diego comic con 2024 but now we got a packaging reveal and i really love the foggy plastic in the front that's intentional they're going for that mysterious mystery of scooby-doo of course this is shaggy norville rogers i know my scooby-doo lore he comes with an extra head portrait he comes with extra hands and he looks pretty darn cool this is the mummy man of course now i will say this i know which character they're going off of for me and kind of looking at this he looks a bit bland just he's missing a little something something Perhaps when we see the accessories, like I'll be talking about in just a second, perhaps that will amplify it. But just as he is right now, it leaves a little bit to be desired, in my honest opinion. When you look at him next to, let's say, the very expressive Scooby-Doo and fellow Shaggy Rogers, yeah, it's the colors and everything else. The mummy just kind of lacks a certain something. But again, we'll see it all kind of put together when you start to collect in you see the articulation of the dog? He has his collar with the SD on it. Again, I really like the expressive look in the eyebrows and the eyes on Scooby-Doo. And, of course, Shaggy has that collared shirt that always bugged me. It looks like he's just pulling on it, and now it's just permanently draped. And then, of course, he has his brown, we'll say, burgundy bell-bottom pants. 
This, however, over here was the big reveal in the sense that we get to see, like so many Scooby-Doo episodes, that when you pull the mask off, it's just some regular guy. And how cool is that clock? I asked about that clock. It seemingly is just kind of a backdrop thing for now, but I really like that clock. But as always in the Scooby-Doo episodes, they always go, well, the actual murderer killer... The, the it's the librarian and he was upset that somebody returned a book late something like that you also get the mask so for all the monsters i.e the mummy that we were just talking about you'll get the unmasked human head and you'll get a little bit of a mask like they just pulled it off and yeah i think that's a nice little touch that's a nice attention to detail over on the cyberpunk edge runners side of things they had some figures out on display now i will tell you this this isn't necessarily for me, but I can appreciate a really creepy looking red eyed robotic girl. The real draw to this line, though, being six inch, is that it has some really cool cloth goods to it. That, coupled with the articulation and everything else, but the sculpts really pop. Just overall, this is a really cool line for a show that I have never watched. <laughs> But in all honesty, and kind of talking to the people at Jada, they go, oh yeah, there's a, a season two that's already on its way. So I said, all right, enough said. I will definitely check it out and see what the big dealio is. But this pose in particular, I really liked the way that this was. It's creepy. It's weird. She's got like this yellow coiled rope thing coming out of her wrists or underneath her forearm kind of thing. It's cool. It makes for some really eye-catching robotic people. And so if you're anything like this guy, like, hey, who's got one robotic thumb and looks good in these black and red sunglasses? Yeah, you know the answer to that. Again, the cloth goods really work with the angular nature of all the cybernetics, all of the armor, they would say, like, the real anime comic book armor. It's a pretty solid, cool-looking line, if this be your thing. And then... Another big reveal, continuing on with their serial mascots line, we have the six-inch Fred Flintstones. Who wants the Flintstones vitamin, everybody? That was the first thing I thought of. I'm like, oh, yeah, remember those? Now, if you know Fruity Pebbles, yeah, you know Fred Flintstone. The colors on this are great. I love the bowl of Fruity Pebbles. He's got his bare feet. Seemingly holds the bowl really well. That looks pretty cool. And I love that he comes with the stone spoon because everything in the Flintstones universe was practical, if you think about it in that way. Each of these figures will come with their own little mini box of fruity pebbles. That's pretty cool. So Fred and Barney can have adventures into the sunset, right? And this is the same kind of packaging overall that we've seen with their cereal mascots. Nice bright red it looks like a box of cereal. It's even got post on there, but it's for 13 plus. So this cereal may not be for you. But like I said, what's a Fred without his Barney? So we're also getting Barney Rubble. <laughs> everything was a pun back then in this. Yeah, everything was a pun back then in those Flintstones eras. Also cigarettes. So I'm surprised they didn't come with a pack of cigarettes for Fred Flintstone. I'm surprised it didn't come with a pack of cigarettes for Fred Flintstone. But again, we're going with Cocoa Pebbles for Barney Rubble. He's going to, of course, come with the box of said cereal, which looks pretty cool. I like that it's really nicely printed, and it should be one of those where it perfectly scales, as you can clearly see, with the figure. So Barney looks to be just a tad shorter, as he should be, than Fred Flintstone. He has his little stone bowl full of Cocoa Pebbles, and he, too, has the stone Spoon. I like the expressions on these, although I will say Fred Flintstone looks a little bit too harsh, a little bit too mean. Perhaps we'll see maybe an extra headboard or something like that, but in the case of Fred Flintstone, if I'm being honest, I think Barney looks good, but Fred looks a little too angry. He's supposed to be angry, but not angry all the time. And then we have some Mega Man updates. Really just kind of seeing figures that we've seen on display before, but I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying this line as well. Again, Jada is really able to capture, and I guess I could say, like the anime expressions, the big wide eyes when they're jumping or moving, or it's just very expressive, and it's really brought forth with 
the movements of their mouth, with the way the eyelids kind of curve. I like the expressions, if you can't tell. But that coupled with the spot-on designs, the powers, the way that they are able to articulate, get in all those video game poses. I will say this, I would love to see a Mega Man be actually able to shoot one of those little, you know, boop, boop, like his little BB gun, hand, whatever it is. The unmasked Rockman slash Mega Man, he looks pretty darn cool. This little robot thing that always peeked out and shot the little bombs when you're least expecting it. Thanks a lot for that. He became like a little character anyways, but screw him. He's a jerk. <laughs> Proto Man looks good. He has a cloth goods scarf. He's got his little shield to him. He's got that little smirk. Proto Man is always just so cool. He knows he's cool too, right? Then you have this version of Mega Man. But because it's getting late, I'm just going to be calling him Penguin Mega Man. But that's not his name, and I know it's, but he does look cool. And you will probably see a lot of variants of Mega Man because it really lends itself with the different powers, and it's just simple swap outs. The penguin that, if I remember correctly, I don't think it slides, I'm thinking of Mario, but that's the one that flies and he drops the egg bomb and it turns into a thousand little monster robot things. I remember that. Then you have, what is it, Snake Man? It's been a long weekend. But again, you see the expressions, the helmets, everything makes this robot master look terrifying. And I love that. I love his hand, just how and the angular kind of tips of the fingers, his blaster is cool, his armor stands out. You have Woodsman, Woodman, whatever it is. <laughs> he looks like a tea kettle on the side a little bit. But again, part of him is wood, and part of him is robot. What a miserable existence, right? If termites were to get in, there's no defense against that. Now, of course, without a doubt, this is Cutman. He looks great. And I always loved in the video game when he'd pull the little scissor top off the top of his head and throw it at you. That was pretty cool. You got the bomb throwing Mega Man. He looks awesome too. I love the bomb. See, having that power on the stand, it, it brings the characters to life. That's what's missing for Marvel Legends sometime. Fireman, he's over in the corner. We already talked about him, but you get the idea. The Mega Man line is looking oh so stellar. But I know the majority of you are probably here to check out some Street Fighters. And Again, it's going to be largely characters we've already seen before. Characters like Fei Long, DJ, who's, I believe, actually hitting off in Malaysia right now. I think there was a Comic-Con out there, so you could actually pick him up. They had limited numbers of him. And for a split second, as I walked up to the Jada booth, I thought, oh my god, that's right. Do they have DJ and Cammy and all that for sale? And I go, no, it's, it's the other convention. Dang it all. But yes, I'm actually a big fan of what they're doing here, but I like to pertain it to Marvel Legends. I always liked Marvel vs. Capcom. Cammy looks really cool. I think they did a great job just overall with her. You also have to think about the articulation scheme of these characters. Not everything can be the same, but you want them to all do sort of the same thing. You fight them to the death. So with T-Hawk here, I like, again, the expressiveness of his face. It's kind of neutral, but at the same time, it's just all kinds of cool. So he's kind of propped over there. He's got the bands on the arms. He's got that belt. <laughs> looks pretty cool. Saget looks awesome. He's got the eye patch. Get an eye patch, right? Just as David Bowie would say. He's got that big gnarly scar, the wrappings on the hands. He looks menacing. That is a great just great overall sculpt for this character. The colors make him pop on his shorts. He's got the wrappings on the feet. Doll Seam, who I've yet to take a look at. I do have him. I think he's an amazing figure. Although, I do wish that the feet on the extendo legs were articulated so you could have him standing with those on. Then you have Vega, which... <laughs> Yes, he will come with his mask. He's got the big old snake tattoo. He's got the Wolverine claws. He, too, has some cloth goods going around his waist right there for his sash. Yeah, overall. See, you see the eye? Like, it's it's very, very expressive. Like, you know what that character is thinking. And then with Balrog here, it's the same thing. The missing tooth. Everything really lends itself, not to, like, a cartoony sort of styling, but more in that anime style. It's not overly cartoon, like kids cartoonish, but it definitely has the elements of, yeah, that's just a very cool look for that character that punches you to death with boxing gloves. M. Bison, 
that's a dang good figure, if you ask me. I love the cape on there, and I love that it came with instructions on how to alter the cape from on to off mode. These two, we already know about. In fact, they're just, they're so yesterday at this point. <laughs> E-Honda, I did joke, and I said, you know, is E-Honda going to come with a car to destroy? No word on that just yet. But apparently, he has an updated head portrait from when we last saw him at San Diego Comic-Con. So, I'd have to go back and really look, but... I would say, if it is improved or not, it looks like a great head portrait. He doesn't have cloth goods, but he's definitely got that little wraparound piece right there. Blanca, which you could have a lot of fun with Blanca, especially in kind of like a variant, like do a power mode where he does the electrical effect. Remember, that was really cool. You get close enough to him, you just shock the heck out of your opponents. He's got all that orange fur amidst the green skin. He's basically the Hulk. But not really the Hulk, of course. But I think that he looks awesome. I'm really looking forward to getting Blanca. And then you have Zangief. You know, not to be bad guy. That kind of thing. Again, you hear that character. You can see that this character is rage-filled. You can see it in his chest hair that is oddly shaped. Like an artichoke? I, I don't know what it is. But you get the idea. He's big. He's massive. He's huge. You have Guile, who I cannot wait to take a dinner plate and set the table on top of that flat top. That, <laughs> that is one mighty fine looking haircut right there. That's a that's a hairstyle you could set your watch to, or just leave your watch on if you so choose. And then Chun Li, of course, which has had many a variant so far. She's a great figure. If you're interested in getting Chun Li, Ryu, or Ryu, whatever you want to say, or Ken. M. Bison, Dalsim, highly recommend all of them. They look great. And then, of course, at the top, we had some Akuma action, which he looks really cool. I have to say, they really went all in on that one. It's nice to kind of see him up close. He was turned around at San Diego Comic-Con, so I'm really looking forward to Akuma. And then you have Angry Ken and Evil Ryu. So we've already seen those. But all in all, it's a pretty impressive showing for New York Comic-Con for Jada Toys. So that will be my roundup of their booth. Again, thank you to Jada for walking me around. You know who you are. I really much appreciate talking with you. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most importantly, remember, when it comes to Jada, they're rocking it. And you can clearly see they are rocking it. When they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.